Hello everyone, I just want to take this time to go over a set of economic indicators that came out last Friday. Um, the first Friday of every month, the Bureau of um, Labor Statistics posts their employment report. And the, rep the employment report is basically uh, a snapshot of how the economy is doing from the labor side uh, for a month. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported May employment numbers. Now, there are many numbers that come out in this report and they're very important because almost all economic activity is driven by income and of course income is driven by jobs. So if the economy is generating jobs, it's generating income, it's generating spending, therefore it's generating output. And we could see here one of the major indicators that's reported is called non-farm payroll employment. Let me just get my pen right here um, and make it my proper pencil. Let me get the perfect. So non-farm payroll employment. And this tells you how many jobs were created on net for a particular month. Now, some jobs were lost, some jobs were gained. This is on net. And you could see that in May right here, the economy generated 75,000 uh, net jobs. Now, 75,000, that's considered to be a relatively weak number because the economy needs to generate at least 150,000 to put everybody who... Um, there are some people who are coming into the labor force for the first time, and there are some people re-entering the labor force, looking for jobs after taking some time off. Uh, the, the economy needs to generate at least 150,000 jobs just to accommodate the new entrants and the re-entrants. So if you want the unemployment rate to stay steady, you need to generate at least 150,000 jobs. And you can see that this is less than 150,000. Now, one month does not make a trend. And you can see how the, the jobs have been kind of volatile on a month-to-month -month basis. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're, they're down. And you can see that it's been moving around here. And it's roughly, I would say, about 190,000 job average for the past, I don't know, almost, almost 10 years now. But you could see what, ha what was happening uh, during the Great Recession. So in our History 50 class, we covered the, um, the financial crisis of the 2008 and 2009. And you could see that's this area right around here. And you could see that this is showing you how many jobs were created or lost on net. And these, these are in thousands. So you could see in May 2009, the US economy in just one month was losing about 800,000 jobs. That's just one month. Uh, so there were about four months, one, two, three, four, about uh, four months where the US economy was dropping about 700 thousand jobs a month and that caused the unemployment rate as you can see another employment indicator that caused unemployment rate to spike to about 10 percent but then around i would say april 2011 we started to see positive job gains and we've been seeing positive job gains ever since and uh, as we're gaining jobs up and down here the unemployment rate is was falling steadily and now the unemployment rate in May is at 3.6%, which is historically low. Um, now, let's look here. Another indicator that's reported is average hourly earnings. And this kind of gives you a, an idea of how workers are doing in terms of pay rather than just jobs. And you can see we've had a nice steady increase in average hourly earnings um, in terms of year over year. Year over year simply means we're taking May, um, May 2018 over May 2019. And that gives you a year over year percentage. Now you can see this is a nice trend upward, but you have to understand prior to uh, 2011, we were generating about 3.8% annual growth so you could t it's taken us almost 10 years to get to just three point about two percent annual growth 
So even though this has been increasing wages, it's been increasing at a relatively slow rate and it still hasn't reached pre-2008 recession levels. Now, here is, so this data right here is basically what I just showed you up here, but it's in bar form and it's uh, more of a, a snapshot over the last two years, right? Uh, and But what I want to do here is I want to draw a straight line. I'm going to make it red. And I'm going to put it right about 150,000. I wanted it red. There we go. And the reason why I did this is, remember I told you before that the U.S. economy needs to generate about 150,000 jobs every month just to keep the economy, the unemployment rate steady. And you can see there are some months where it is below that, like this, and some months, like last month, it's above it. Um, so you could see that uh, over the last three months, we've averaged about 151,000 jobs. 151, so exactly what we need just to keep the unemployment rate steady. But what's interesting is when the new data comes out, they will revise previous months. So this month right here, which is a good month, this, this was April, it was initially over 260,000. So you could see right now it's um, 224. It was 263. So this much was lopped off. And the same thing goes with uh, March. March was higher and it got revised downward. So um, the employment situation isn't as strong as we previously thought. And the question is, is this 75,000 job gain, is this going to be one blip or is this going to be continue soft job growth, uh, which could mean um, a slowing in economic activity uh, down the road. So hopefully this is giving you an idea of, of what this report is all about and how it relates to our class when, it, when we talked about things like GDP, measuring economic activity. Uh, as always, if you have any questions on this, please just uh, reply below and I'll be more than happy to uh, explain things.